pop clip has this week left the Mac App Store. You can no longer get this great little utility in Apple's App Store for the Mac. Now, OK, you, you can still get it directly from the developer, just as you always could, really, for years and years. And you can get it through Setup, the uh, subscription service with, well, PopClip and 200 or more other Mac apps and utilities. But it has gone from the Mac App Store. And that means it's gone from the widest possible audience it could have. In theory, it could have had the audience of every Mac user in the world. Now, right, in practice, actually, hardly anybody uses the Mac App Store. I mean, I use it a lot, but still, compared to the iPhone and the iPad App Store, it's tiny, tiny. But still, I really like PopClip, and I don't want you to miss it just because it isn't going to be in your face anymore. So, let me tell you about PopClip, but since that's not going to take long, let's make something out of this. Let me also show it to you in use as I was recording this week's podcast for 58 Keys Patreon members. And since two other little apps make writing that, making that quicker and easier and, well, actually, it's, it's already fun, but kind of somehow more fun, let me show you those too. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, is for writers like you and me, who use and who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads and sometimes use them for other things. Uh, do subscribe or support 58 Keys on Patreon, because there's always so much to talk about, and this time, three things all alike in dignity, and actually all three that have been covered or at least touched on in 58 Keys before, but not quite like this. Okay. PopClick is a bit of a fudge. It's the reason for doing this, but I was writing a bit about PopClip going from the Mac App Store. I was writing it in 58 Keys podcast for Patreon members, and we're... actually, why don't I just show you, right? This is what I did when I'm writing away, and I realised I also want to talk about it here with you, so because you can see here what it does. Much easier to get it when you see it, isn't it? You recognise that little toolbar, or, or at least if you've never seen quite that before, you recognise the idea of it. In fact, actually, if you've never even heard a pop clip, you recognise it because you've seen it on your iPhone. This little toolbar idea, it's part of the regular iPhone and iPad, actually, where actually, in fact, just to be clear, it looks like this. So I suppose all PopClip does is bring that to the Mac, which is a startlingly excellent thing all by itself. And and I say just. Notice uh, in my version of PopClip, there are familiar tools, copies, paste in there. That's how it looks when I use it on the Mac. It can, probably will, look very different on yours because there are 100, 170 or something other little extra tools you can have for free once you have pop clip for example i've added this one there of um sending selected text to omnifocus my favorite to do app or actually chuck selected text straight over to google translate or actually there's another one there's a button there just look at the definition of a word right there in whatever app i'm in on the mac you can very easily add more this is key but actually i'm doing a thing now where it would be handy to just kind of rapidly pop in a timestamp. I'm producing a, a different podcast where if I just click in the notes and use pop clip, I can say what time it is we got to this bit roughly, and that actually helps me later in the editing process. Open pop clip in the max menu bar like this, choose the plus sign, scroll through all of these things called extensions, download one you fancy, download all of them, double click the one you download at a time, install it and it's there forever, right in pop clip, right at your fingers. Or it is, depending on what it is you've just extended. Earlier today, for instance, just today, I added a pop clip extension for shortening web links. I want to give you a link to pop clip on setup. I mean, the direct link, but also the setup one. With setup, I get a, an affiliate link if you happen to buy it that way. But the affiliate link I have to give you, it stretches from here to London or something. So with this now I can select the full link and when pop link appears it sees that it's a link and it offers me the link shortener. Equally if I if what I've selected is not a link well it, then it doesn't do it. So you can add a lot of these extensions knowing that they will only appear when it is when it's when it's right when you want them really. Pop clip costs about twenty dollars to buy directly. It kind of depends on what country you're in, but around twenty dollars. Or as I say, it's in setup, and setup is a bundle of is it two hundred or two hundred and fifty more Mac apps that you get for a single subscription price, and that price starts at ten dollars a month. I think 
right? That you, you get to, as a writer, you get to know apps and software chiefly when you need them. So rather than taking an app and deciding, I'm going to study this, I'm going to learn every bit of this, the way I work is, right, I need to do X. Apparently this app can do it. Let's play our game. So let me continue this example of using little Mac utility apps like PopClip in one situation, in this case, while I was making a podcast, because there I was. I was working on it. I write the podcast. I'm a writer. You're a writer. That's what we do. But during this week's one, I was also writing about a book and I was sure, so sure that there was an interesting interview with the author online somewhere. So I found the interview on YouTube and actually ignore me, I'll put a link to the whole thing in the, in the video description. And yep, there it was. There was author Ed, Z Ed Zvik talking about his really excellent new book, Hits, Flops and Other Illusions. And it, Zwick is best known as a film director these days, but to me, he's one of the writers behind 30-something. And with Winnie Holtzman, who created it, My So-Called Life. So writing hero, just for those. Anyway, for the podcast, right, you know, I played the video in YouTube and I recorded the audio in the next of the apps I want to talk to you about, Audio Hijack. It's not a very good interview. Okay, you'll see. But there was one line that I thought, well, I can use that. That bit's good. And so look at this. As well as recording the sound from the video, Audio Hijack transcribed it. So I read the transcription, thought, yeah, that's it. That's the bit I want. I'll have that. Now, if I'd been sending you the script uh, to produce, sorry, I would have told you also the precise timing of the clip. So when it starts in the interview and to the second when it ends. I would also have written into the script the in and the out cues, right? The first words of the, the clip and the last words of the clip. The first is so you know you've got the right clip. And the last is so you know when it ends. Really, that kind of, this is more important in broadcast than edited audio. But yeah, since this was just a script for me, though, I didn't even bother doing that much. I just listened to that bit, listened to the bit I wanted, and then wrote the script around it so that I quickly introduced it properly and then used it to explain why I was going on to so thoroughly recommend this book. Did I say there's a link to this book in the description? There's a link to this book in the description. Then, yeah, you know how podcast works. I recorded that script using another app. Actually, do you know, I'd forgotten this till I said that about using that. It's just, isn't it weird how you get so used to doing things that you can actually forget about them. You can miss thinking of them. This isn't the app I want to tell you about. I recorded the podcast script, though, in a QuickTime Player. Okay, sometimes I'll use Logic Pro, which is actually where I always edit audio, and Logic Pro, that's another app I've forgotten. Okay, I love Logic Pro. How did I forget that? Love Logic Pro, quite keen on QuickTime Player too. Mostly because, well, despite the name Player, it's actually also really an audio recorder, and you've already got it. It's free, right there on your Mac. Anyway, I record the script, right? I voice the audio, I perform, and then I'm left with an audio track that has, well, it hasn't been saved yet. So I, this is getting really obvious, honey, isn't it? File, save, or actually it's Command S that I do. But then I get this. This is the regular, familiar Mac save dialog box with a wrapper around it. In QuickTime Player, Pages, Scrivener, Word, any Mac app you can think of, any any app that can save a document, default folder X wraps this around it. So quick access to recent folders or favorite ones, or this, I adore this. I can hover the mouse over my desktop and there you see it highlight, or let's hover it just here, just over the window with the folder for this week's podcast and click. Default folder X makes a save dialog box jump to that folder. Now you just hit save, knowing that it's been saved into the right place, ready for me to edit everything later on. Everything together in one place, ready for the edit. So I said that this was about three apps and I meant PopClip, Audio Hijack and Default Folder X. Okay, I forgot then that it would also include QuickTime Player and Logic Pro. Was there anything else I've forgotten? But listening to me, you should never listen to me. I think I've also spent the entire episode basically advertising Ed's Vick's book, which is fine, which is more than fine. I urge you to read that book. Did I mention link in description? I have also, they've been plugging the fact that 58 Keys Patreon members get a writer's podcast every week. 
truly did not set out to plug that quite so hard. But I'm going to live with it. Okay. So, you know, just so it's clear, 58 Keys Writers Podcast, it's every Monday and it has writer app news, book recommendations and more as things change throughout the week. Writer, interesting stuff, I hope. You get it for free as a member of my 58 Keys Patreon and actually it's part of, you know, throughout the week, there's more 58 Keys-ness. I occasionally even explain why all of this is called 58 Keys. But three apps that I'm going to tell you about, all excellent and one of them is this pop clip which is no longer quite as widely available as it was do check i mean they're all great but do check that one out i loathe the idea of something so good i mean small but so good losing its exposure on the mac app store but it was necessary for actually for all sorts of reasons that you can read about in the developers blog so put another link to that in the description that's actually quite a lot of links now, quite a couple of links and a fair few apps to explore. I think that's good. I think that's good. What I know is that that's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself. Eh? Write more. Don't put off the writing just because you've now got five apps to have a look at and whoever knows how many books and blogs to read. Keep writing, write more, and I'll see you soon.